Now, uh, today we're going to do a back to back review. we start off with Infinity War and also do a review of Endgame since they're both part one and part two of one another. Um, these two films, pretty good. Some of the best films that the Marvel Cinematic Universe has made. They come to a conclusion of the Infinity War saga. Started back in 2008 with Iron Man. So, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, this is a culmination of Phase 3. As well as the other MCU movies, but mostly Phase 3. We started off with Captain America Civil War. And we had Thor hit a solo movie. Ant-Man get a sequel. And some experimental films such as Spider-Man and Captain Marvel. Doctor Strange. Black Panther. A lot of experiments. This is more of their experimental phase they've been doing uh, recently. So getting to Infinity War, we start off after the events of Thor Ragnarok. We have Thor's spaceship um, it was attacked by Thanos. You know, this was a it was an alright scene, a great introduction to Thanos here. He uh, he kills Heimdall, he kills Loki. Uh, Thor has a hard time trying to fight Thanos, and Thanos proves to be no match for Thor. So when Thor um, he's knocked out unconscious, Heimdall before he dies he sends Hulk down to Earth, and the ship ends up uh, blowing up. Uh, some people escape. Apparently, Thanos only kills half and leaves the other half alive. So that's what happens there. So, Bruce Banner comes down to Earth. He warns Dr. Strange. He tells him that Thanos is coming. So he also has to go warn Tony Stark as well. So, we get a, a discussion between Tony Stark and Dr. Strange how to deal with Thanos. Apparently they hear something outside. It's Thanos' army. Uh, I believe they're called the Black Order. The Children of Thanos. Ebony Maw. I believe, that, I believe that's his name. And you know Thanos' guys that come down in New York City. And a, a great introduction to the movie. A great action scene. This movie has a lot of action. We see Iron Man fighting the Thanos' army, we see Spider-Man coming into the mix. Spider-Man is supposed to keep track of Doctor Strange. All right, apparently Doctor Strange gets abducted to a spaceship. So Spider-Man Iron Man had to go after him. They eventually free him to kill Ebony Maw. And then we get the introduction to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, they're there, they see Thor lying out in space unconscious. They bring him in, they wake him up, and uh, Thor tells him that Thanos is here, he's coming. And yeah, the guards know about Thanos too, because Gamora is Thanos' daughter. Then we get an introduction to Vision and Scarlet Witch. They come into the movie, they're apparently in a relationship. Uh, they find out what's going on in New York. Thanos' army tracks them as well because. Vision has what's called the Mind Stone, and it's one of the six Infinity Stones. Doctor Strange, he possesses the Time Stone, another one of the Infinity Stones. So the Avengers, Captain America, Black Widow, they come to help Vision, and they take out uh, some other parts of Thanos' army. Apparently has like four children, or something like that, so we they take those guys out. Those guys actually escape. So, the Guardians of the Galaxy, they split up. Thor takes Rock Raccoon. They're going to find a new hammer for Thor. The rest of the Guardians go to find a Collector. Is that nowhere? He has the Ether. Notice the Reality Stone. But they're too late because Thanos beats him too. He's already taken the stone. He kidnaps Gamora and he takes her to Vormir. This is where the Soul Stone is at. Then we get a flashback to Gamora and Thanos. Uh, we, get, we get a flashback to Gamora's life as a child. Her family is being attacked by Thanos. Thanos comforts her, tells her everything's going to be alright. And he raises Gamora as his own. So pretty much a nice scene to see where both these two come from. 
So anyway, Thor gets his new hammer. It's called Stormbreaker. Uh, Captain America, Steve Rogers. You know, he takes uh, Vision to Wakanda. I mean, he meets Buggy Barnes there. Apparently, a Black Panther and the rest of Wakanda know how to deal with things like Vision. So you go to Vormir, Thanos has to sacrifice Gamora. That's how you get the Soul Stone. One soul for another. The Guardians eventually meet up with, the, with Iron Man and Spider-Man. And they have to take a while to get to know each other. They have a lot of big egos here. We see a fight scene between the, the Avengers and the Guardians. It's a pretty cool fight scene. We'll eventually come to agreement that they're on the same side and they're after Thanos. And the final battle comes to Wakanda. Probably a pretty good finale here. It's Wakanda. So the wars come into Wakanda. If see the Avengers, they fight the Shatari. Uh, Thanos comes to Titan. We can see him and Iron Man, Spider Man do a fight scene. They eventually get Thanos under control. Well, they said try to take try to take off the Infinity Gauntlet off him. Once when Chris Pratt, the Star Lord, learns of Gomorrah's death, he starts freaking out. He starts punching Thanos in the face. Thanos wakes up and he just takes them all out. He grabs the Time Stone and he comes to Wakanda. He's after Vision. You also see Thor make his return. He was the MVP of this movie. You know, he wants to try to kill Thanos after he killed Loki. But it was too late. Thanos has all the stones. He snaps. Everyone just disappears. It's just very, very shocking. This was a pretty good, good film. I love it. Man. My favorite of all time. It was, it was weird seeing the Avengers you know, disappear. You know, next we see Thanos at the sitting at the sunset. You know, he accomplished his mission. He stood tall. This is one of the first defeats for the Avengers. They haven't really lost. So post credit scene, we see Nick Fury calling Captain Marvel because he needs his help. So we go to Avengers Endgame. We see the Avengers all defeated. And we see Tony Stark there. He's lost in space with Nebula. He eventually finds his way to Earth. He meets up with uh, Tony Stark, the Avengers, and Captain Marvel. And they try to track down Thanos. If they find out that he's on his home planet, they go there. And they try to ask him where the stones are. And he destroyed the stones. So they can't, they can't bring back their uh, lost comrades. So what we see here is Thor kills Thanos with an axe. Stormbreaker. And I was like, well the movie's over. They haven't really brought back their uh, team yet. That's the only thing they have to accomplish. So five years have passed. Uh, New York is just a mess. Tony no, Tony Stark has a kid. A lot of things have changed. Tony Stark is married to Pepper Potts. He has a kid. You know, Hawkeye's gone rogue. Thor is fat. And Hulk's now Professor Hulk. He can talk. A lot of things have changed. Ant-Man, we see him in the movie. Uh, he returns from going subatomic. He wakes up from being subatomic. He has no clue what's going on. So he later goes to a cemetery. He finds out that all these people perished in the snap. So he goes to Steve Rogers' his place at the Avengers Mansion. Tells him that he's alive. And they go to Tony Stark. And he has a plan to bring the guys back. It's about time travel. Tony Stark, he is reluctant to accept this idea, but he has to. And they do. So the Avengers gear up, they go time travel, they have to capture all the Affinity Stones, and do their own version of the snap to bring back the rest of their team. And so far, everything goes well. Thor and Rocket, they get the Aether. Captain America grabs Loki's scepter. Thor gets the, uh, Hulk gets the Time Stone. This is where the complications occur, starting with Iron Man. Iron Man does get the Tesseract, however Hulk runs him down, and apparently Loki manages to get the Tesseract and he escapes from confinement after the events of the first Avengers movie. So, 
Yeah. A small complication. It doesn't really hurt anything. We'll see where the Loki TV show goes. So then Iron Man and Captain America, they have to go back into the 1970s to get the Tesseract. Because it was there in the 70s too. See a few touching moments. We see Steve Rogers uh, meet, Peggy, meet, meet Peggy Carter. He didn't interact with another, but he saw her. We also see an interaction between Tony Stark and Howard Stark. A touching moment. Because we know what happens to Howard and him and his wife die in a car crash. You know, for Tony to see him, it, 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 it's a shocker. Major complication comes when Rhodey and Nebula go to the Power Stone. Rhodey gets to Power Stone. Nebula, uh, apparently Thanos tracks her. You know, there's another Nebula in the movie. Thanos knows something's wrong about her. And so Thanos reads her mind. And they're both they're both cyber. They're both Nebula's link. They're both kind of machines. You know, cybernetically linked. I guess that's the word. So Thanos is on their tails. He knows that the Avengers are there for the stones. He knows that he collected the stones in the future. So Thanos sends the Nebula from that time to follow the Avengers. So she follows the Avengers back to the mansion. And the mansion just gets destroyed. And we get to see a battle between Thanos and in the Avengers. It was great seeing Thanos' army come together. The entire of the MCU come together. You get to see some pretty cool things happen, such as all the female superheroes getting together. Captain America can wield Thor's hammer, means he's wealthy, he's worthy. The ending of the movie sees Thanos, he grabs the Infinity Gauntlet, he has his stones, he does a snap, and he says, I am invetable. But the snap doesn't work. Because Tony Stark, he steals the stones from him, does his own snap, and he says, I am Iron Man. Which is what he said at the last line of the Iron Man movie. And that's his last line here. Because Tony Stark, when he snaps the stones, the power is too much for him. Apparently dies. So kind of ironic here, because he started the whole MCU, and he ends it. So we get to see a funeral. You know, the Avengers and Captain America back in time. That take back the stones to their original place. And he eventually lives out his life in the past. He dances with Peggy Carter in the movie. He comes back as old Cap. When he took the advice of what Tony Stark said. You know, a simple life. So, Avengers Infinity War. I think that was slightly better. But Endgame was good too. The only issues I have is bringing back all these characters back from the dead. Just Spider-Man. Winter Soldier, and Black Panther. That's my biggest pet peeve is bringing back characters from the dead. I don't really like that. It's overdone. Um, it's to do it too many times. This is its importance for resurrection. If someone dies, I prefer them to stay dead. I also didn't really, but you know what? That's passable, so I'll get rid of that. Minor complaint. I also didn't really like Professor Hulk. I thought it uh, strayed away from Hulk's character, but you know, they don't have a problem with it, except I think it was too much Mark Ruffalo and not really the Hulk. But overall, Avengers Endgame. Endgame Infinity War, both solid films. Great way to end the first chapter of the MCU, Infinity War Saga. We can't wait to see what is next. Endgame. I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Infinity Ward, that breaks my threshold. That's like a 15 out of 10, but a pretty good job for Marvel there. So, these films were definitely needed for the MCU. So, what happens to the future? Uh, stay tuned.